Greetings, YouTube, and welcome to episode 186 of the 4,000 Question Challenge. Um, what wedding did you object to or wanted to object to? I, I didn't, though I kind of wish my friends had stopped me from getting married to my first spouse. It's not a good idea. Um, what would you like to do with your mate that you have never done? Well, this chapter is called Love and Sex, and I'm not going to get into particulars of my sex life I have with my partner. Um, I'll talk about sex in general terms. This is not a general general question. It's completely and utterly inappropriate for a getting to know someone. How would you like to have sex with your partner in a way that you haven't done before? No, that's not going to happen. I'm not going to answer this question. That question has no place in conversation with someone even you know well, unless you really know them well. What areas of your past are most important for you to discuss with a fiance, fiance or fiancé? Uh, I did. Um, the fact that I have anxiety, depression, PTSD, and uh, am a survivor of physical and sexual abuse as a child. Those are things that should be discussed. And I did. What drives you craziest about your partner? Why would you ask that question? That's a hurtful question. That's going to cause animosity between the person answering and their partner. Why would you do that? Is fidelity obsolete or coming back? I think fidelity is important. I don't think it was ever obsolete. I don't think it's coming back. I think it's been a constant. Do you think it is possible for a person to be truly asexual? Yes. Why don't you go ask an asexual person, you conservative dipstick? Ah! This is a doctor that wrote this, and in theory, a Buddhist. Who apparently deals in binaries a lot. Holy crap. How old were you when you had first had sex? Okay, this is an interesting question. I'm not going to count the sex that it was the sexual acts that I was involved in prior to consent. So I'm only going to discuss the ones that I consented to with a partner that consented to them. So I was first, I was 14 when I began to have non-penetrative sex with a partner, um, engaged in oral sex at about shortly after that, um, and then engaged in penetrative sex at 17. But I'm not going to talk about the abuse, because that wasn't consenting, so it doesn't fucking count. Describe the person to whom you lost your virginity. Uh, well, the, her name was Cheryl. I have no idea what her last name was. Um, we met at a, she was a friend of friends. We met at a haunted house that we were both working at to help charity. So I wasn't getting paid to do it. I was just doing it for fun. Um, just enjoy scaring people. Um, and we hooked up and over a two day period, we had sex. We did, I, there wasn't a lot of preliminary. She didn't seem to really get into the whole foreplay thing, which was I thought was very strange because I thoroughly enjoyed foreplay, foreplay. So I didn't quite grasp that part. But at that time, I was 17 and dumb enough to think just getting laid was important. In retrospect, I should have probably seen that as a sign of someone that wasn't positive they wanted to have sex but felt it was something they had to do. So... 17, I couldn't tell that, but now I can. Um, what is your longest grudge? What the hell is that question doing in a chapter about love and sex? I've had grudges with coworkers, but never with a partner. Because if I had a long-term grudge with a partner, they stopped being my partner. 
Okay, last question for 186 is what is, in what ways have you changed since getting married? Well, I'm a hell of a lot healthier. Um, I'm much healthier mentally than emotionally than I was when I got married, which is a positive. And my wife appreciates that I work really damn hard at becoming more healthy on an emotional and uh, mental level. She uh, understands that I am always working at it. And I am never not working at it. My therapist appreciates that as well. When I walk in with like line after line of things that I have been contemplating in the month that we have been apart. Um, and he's like, he said, you will come to a session and you will have three sessions worth of stuff to bring to me. As opposed to what a lot of patients do when they only friggin' work, clients only work at in the session itself. You can get nothing done if you only work on your therapy in the session itself. And the people that don't, they just don't work on it when they're not there. And it just baffles me. How can it not be important to you? You're going to therapy. Obviously, it's important. So why the hell aren't you working on it when you're not in therapy in the session itself? So I'm working on it all the damn time. And I keep notes. And I make videos. So I talk about it all the damn time. By the time you see this, there's probably another two dozen videos I've done since then about mental health and things like that. So here's to being mentally healthy and here's to working on becoming mentally healthy and maintaining that mental health because it is a process. It is not something you do once and walk away from. No, it is not. It's like a relationship. A relationship is hard. It takes work. You don't just get married or fall in love and well we're done happily ever after that doesn't work that way it's it's work because if you don't work at it you will be alone or you'll be in a really miserable marriage or relationship and that's worse than being alone so thank you for being here for uh, episode 186 of the 4000 question challenge i hope that you will be here for episode 187